Hey nerds! <laughs> <laughs> Didn't expect to say that. I am still playing around with the lighting on this new camera, and if you saw my last video, you'll know that it was pretty dark. Um, so I've done some work around that, and I thought I would do some lightness testing with this dark deck. Um, so I came home the other day, and I had the Oracle of Black Enchantment in the mail, and this is Patrick Valenza's new Oracle deck. And uh, I backed this primarily because of the brilliant marketing that came along with it. So <laughs> uh, one thing he's really good at is marketing. Well, one, th one thing is really good. He's also really good at art and, you know, magic. So here's uh, the harp card, which goes to Mildred Payne's Pocket Oracle. Um, and then here's a card from the, uh, um, not the Deviant Moon, the Triumphy Della Luna that came in the box. And here's the Oracle of Black Enchantment, which I did pre-order, um, as a result of his smart, smart marketing magic. And, uh, I thought I would just do a walkthrough of it. I'm not super convinced I'm going to keep this deck. And the reason for that is primarily because I think it's artistically beautiful and practically not something I'll ever use. But let's uh, let's take a walk through it. Now there um, there is an online PDF, as PDFs tend to be, that tells you all the meanings of the cards. And uh, I did read through that, but I decided not to share it here because it, you know, it's one of those things where it sort of is is a, um, you know, is a is a sort of byproduct of of the deck. So um, let's let's open up the cards, and it comes in this really great box. Um, what does it say here? Actually, I haven't read this. The Oracle of Black Enchantment is Mildred the Red Witch Pain's most powerful divination tool, exclamation point. Believed to have been created circa 1932, the deck uh, is reminiscent of old woodcuts and filled with dark secrets. It was rediscovered in 2018 during the exhumation of Mildred's long-forgotten grave. And if you didn't see that video, you missed out, and you should check it out. It's still out there. Patrick Valenza is a talented, talented dude. So you open up the box and you get the deck. And um, they're large cards and they're all landscape, which is unusual for any deck. You know, most decks are portraits. So here we have Mildred Payne's Oracle of Black Enchantment and there's the address where you get the... the um, book. There's Mildred herself. The thing that amazes me about Patrick Bones is not only is he he's a great artist, he's a great storyteller. And those things don't always go hand in hand. Um, so let's zoom in just a skosh more. And uh, the cards are numbered and they're really, <laughs> I mean, they're really cool. Again, artistically. Um, can I imagine doing a reading with this? No. Now, I don't have the guidebook near me, so I can't tell you what the titles are, so I'll just sort of chat through. Oh, and here are the backs. Come on. The art is super duper cool. Now, if you don't like woodcuts, which a lot of Marseille decks are, you will not like this bad boy. But... Uh, the thing that gets me about his art is the wit in it. You know, he has like a dark, fun wittiness. And that makes me happy. I have these sort of off-center because my lighting requires it, essentially. Because you can see that glare on the, on the right. This card I remember being called Astral Projection. Hey, you don't know this, but I just ate dinner. 
Um, and if there's something I can recommend to all of you is that if you've never had french fries from a Chinese takeout place, you're probably not living your best life. Um, so here we are in nine. Artistically, this is really in line and really close to one of the things I love, which is um, Triumphi della Luna, or one of its many different uh, language iterations. This is an oracle deck that's really not like anything else. And as a result, you could read it intuitively. Or you could use the guidebook on the website when you get it. Now there is a second printing of this happening. So if you didn't pre-order it, you can. I don't know if the second printing comes with the harp. I imagine it does. <laughs> this weirdly reminds me of Abraham Lincoln's assassination um, not his assassination, but the assassins were all <laughs> hung at the same time. The thing about this deck is that the art is really cool. I love the woodblock block quality to it. Um, it is a bridge between the Mildred Payne and the Tranfidella Luna. The style of this is really different, I think, from, at least tonally from, or not tonally necessarily, but what's the word I'm aiming for here, um, texturally from the uh, Deviant Moon, which is very popular, but there's a three-dimensional quality to that deck that the more recent uh, Patrick Valenza stuff doesn't have. And by doesn't have, I just simply mean he's, he's going for sort of an older, more old-fashioned art quality. Which I dig. I don't know, you know, I, I went through this... Well, so I ordered it knowing, like, this isn't a deck I necessarily want. But I, I felt it earned my purchase from the cleverness of his marketing campaign, you know, that sort of revelation video for those who got the, um, the Gravedigger's moment, Yank. um, was cool. And, uh, there's a theatricality to his marketing that I just think is so smart. And there's no doubt the art he's making is so cool. I really love True Infidelity Luna. I don't use it much. Uh, but mostly, again, it could sort of fit into a video I made recently of decks I have that I love that I don't use much. This is, um, <laughs> at least on the surface, a dark deck. Now, you could argue there's like an act of salvation here, right? And it's called the Oracle of Black Enchantment, so why shouldn't it be? But again, I can't imagine pulling this out and doing a seri you know, a serious reading with it. Which, and by serious I just mean a... real. <laughs> a reading with an intended result. Um, I suppose, is what I'm saying. Um, it's just such a, a unique thing that's so different and dark, but beautiful, you know? So, I mean, I could imagine doing Halloween readings with this. I could imagine pulling this in relationship to the Triumphy. And in the little guidebook online, love this. You know, he suggests 
using the Mildred Payne to clarify. And the thing I'll say about this is that the guidebook, or the guide PDF, I guess, does include spreads and suggestions for reading. There's just no doubt this dude's a talented guy. That. I mean, I'd love to have that as the wallpaper on my computer. There's also something I love about his art that's kind of grotesque. He reminds me of a latter-day Edward Gorey. And I think, you know, we, he's making these interactive books, in essence. Um... I think I shared that already. Yeah, these are the opening cards. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think as, as, as a piece of art, this is really cool. As a deck that I might read with, I don't super know, you know? It's, it's tough to say. Um, but, I don't know. I did sort of offer it for trade. If something comes along that makes me say, boy, I really want that, I'm willing to give this up. Um, that's cool. You know, this isn't going to be an impossible deck to get because it's it's going to be reprinted and um, you should be able to get it. Again, I don't know if it comes with the harp, but I imagine it will uh, in the future printing. But yeah, so uh, that's the Oracle of Black Enchantment by Patrick Valenza and Deviant Moon. And um, just a quick look through it for those who are curious. Again, I, I don't know what the, you know, maybe I should do a reading with this deck to find out what the future of it is. But I, I don't know. I think it's cool. I don't know that it's for use. But as a piece of art, I love it. So, I don't know. We'll see. Congratulations, though, on just great storytelling, which to me as a writer is so exciting. So, hope you enjoyed this. And uh, hopefully the lighting is better than my last one. Be good.